the written word is often the best means to communicate, especially when dealing with figures or terms that have special meaning. We've covered the use of the amateur radiogram on this channel, which covers most of the cases that we need, whether it's for emergency, disaster relief, or whether it's just for a friendly message going over a long distance. Today, we focus on the basic message format, the 16-line radiogram. It's used by government services like Mars and Shares. The Black Swan Net has been using it, and to good effect. Stick around. Black Swan, Black Swan. Why do we have formatted messages? Why don't we just talk like we're face to face? Well, the fact of the matter is that unless people are in fact face to face, that communication happens by relay. That's how all internet services work, whether it's email, web, or even voice over internet protocol. Users just don't see the messaging because that's all taken care of by the software and the networks that the software interoperates with. If you are using your radio gear and skill for someone else, then you are their network, and you are the communication software that makes use of the network. That's why it's imperative for us to understand messaging and how we can make the most of it to fit the particular case that we have before us. That way we are going to be effective at communicating for the third party, whether it's a person or an organization. We do that work and they don't even realize that it's taking place. We have talked about this a lot with the amateur radiogram. We've even practiced originating, relaying, and delivering presentation formats like the ICS-213. Using the radiogram for transmission, the ICS-213 for presentation. The amateur radiogram is very powerful and flexible. It's an excellent tool for the job at hand. It's part of a system of relays that are able to work without regard to the mode of operation. That means voice and CW in addition to digital. There are other transmission formats that are focused on different tasks, of course. So where is the 16-line radiogram defined? Five nations have formed a combined communications electronics board. Australia, Canada, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, and the United States. The board sponsors the development of standards that are released as the Allied Communications Publications, ACPs. The most relevant standards are going to be 121, the General Communication Instructions, 125, Radio Telephone Procedure, 126, Teletypewriter or Teleprinter Procedures, and 131, Operating Signals. See the links in the description below to get copies from the Black Swan Comics website if you don't already have them. So what does the basic message format do? The purpose of the basic message format is like any other transmission format. It's to provide critical information for the network about the message. That's going to be which station or stations should receive it, which station is sending it, how to identify the message uniquely, how to transmit the message, how to handle the message, how to know if you have a true copy, how to to know if it's a genuine message. And of course, it's going to carry the message itself. It is the format needed to carry it on the particular circuit where it's being transmitted. It's just like an envelope that is going to carry something in the mail. Let's look at an example. The basic message format has many features, but let's start with the most simple case. We need to use only the lines that we need, which means that we have nowhere near 16 lines. We are not going to cover abbreviated or informal messages today. This message is called plain dress, which means that the address information is visible in the clear. There is also a code dress message format, which is exactly the same as plain dress, except that the address information is encrypted along with the message itself, leaving only the information needed to handle the message in the clear. Code dress messages are made by taking a plain dress message and encrypting or encoding everything except the transmission and handling information. The result looks like this. Mars, shares, and other government stations might send code dress messages. 
amateur stations are not generally permitted to obscure the meaning of messages under 47 CFR 97.113A4, so they won't transmit encrypted messages. The code dress message, when decrypted, will be exactly the same as plain dress. Let's go through this line by line to show the anatomy of the message. The message, whether plain dress, code dress, abbreviated procedure, will have three parts the heading, the text, and an ending. Each part has one or more components. For example, the heading part has procedure, preamble, and address components. Components can have elements. For example, the address component has an originator element. We use only the elements we need, but we keep them in the same order, which is why we refer to them by line number. During relays and other message handling, some lines might change, except for lines 5 through 13. They are non-changeable. That's the core of the message. So let's go through the lines we're presenting to explain each part. Like the amateur radiogram, the basic message can be handled with procedure for voice or type. ACP-125 is voice procedure. ACP-126 is print procedure. When we write, including printing on the screen here, we use printed procedure, procedure signals, pro signs. When we voice the same thing, we use procedure words, pro words. We'll walk through each of these, showing the printed version on screen, the pro sign, and then we will voice the spoken version, the pro word. This is not needless jargon or a violation of the plain language principle. It's the procedure that trained operators use to work the circuit to make sure that the communications are accurate and efficient. The prosign DE is the equivalent of the pro word this is. This is the station that is making the transmission of this message. NR is number. This is the serial number of the message from the station. This is useful for accounting and tracing and so on. The pro word number or the pro sign NR is actually optional, so in some cases you won't see it used. We then have the message number. This is voiced just as it is after the pro word number. Government procedure actually allows for figures and initials in the number, but all figures is the most common format. It's also possible to have multiple message numbers. We're going to stick to the simple case today and we're going to follow up with additional training videos to deal with stranger cases later. Next, we deal with precedence. This is defined in ACP 121. We cover it in Radio KD8 TTE episode 40. R is voiced routine. It means that's going to be three hours until the start of the next business day before the message is going to be delivered. P is priority. It means that it will be delivered in one to six hours. O is voiced immediate. That means it's got 30 to 60 minutes to be delivered. Z is flash. You stop what you're doing and you handle it as fast as humanly possible with the target of getting there in under 10 minutes. Next up is the date time group defined in ACP 121. It's always six figures followed by an initial or maybe two initials. The date time group starts with the day of the month, always written two digits, so you use a leading zero if necessary. The next two digits are the hour of the day, and the next two digits are the minute of the hour. Following will be an initial that indicates the time zone. In this case, we use Z to indicate Zulu time. That's UTC plus zero, the equivalent of Greenwich Mean Time. Now, in some cases, we have seen people use L to mean local time. That happens in amateur radio, and it is not correct. There is a time zone L, and we want to make sure that in any case, we are not causing confusion. There is no time zone J, however, and that is commonly used to mean local when we're talking about the use of government circuits. Next in the date time group is the month. It's technically optional, but if you need it to disambiguate, most certainly use it. It's always going to be a three initial abbreviation for the month. Following the month is the year. Again, that's optional. 
It can be written as four digits, it may be written as two digits, and it may just not be there at all. Next up is the ProSine FM, voiced from. Following that is going to be the sign of the originator addressee. In most planned circuits or operations, you will have signs that are predefined, so you don't need to give a lot of routing information or further instructions. Details should be included in your signal operating instructions. Next up is the ProSign TO. It's voiced to, and the sign of the action addressee follows. Next is the ProSign BT. It is voiced break. This is a separator. This is how the procedure helps to ensure that operators can easily see where the text starts and stops. Following the first break is the message text. In digital transmission, it's sent just as it's written. Voice transmission might need some additional help, some pro words like figure or initials. Those are covered in ACP 125. Following the message text is another separator, the ProSign BT voiced break. We then have four ends. That is the end of message marker. In voice procedure, this is going to be indicated with a pro word, either over or out, as the situation requires. Now, this format is extremely flexible. This is a simple example that will just help us to get started. We'll follow up in the future with additional videos that go into more detail on particular elements of this format. There are 16 lines or elements defined, but we're going to use only the ones that we need. We can skip the rest, we just have to make sure we keep them in the right order. For example, in this message, we have no line 8. That is the information addressee. Line 7 is 2, the action addressee, the recipient that we expect to act with the information. Line 8 is info, the recipient that we send it to is a courtesy for information only, not for action. If we need to send something to someone for their information, let's say a neighboring station, then we'll add that as line 8. We can also repeat some elements. For example, if we send the message to one addressee for action, and then two different addressees for information, then we can repeat line 8. Notice that we write info again, so it's clear that we have two different information addressees. We do that because some addressees can be structured such that they wrap or fold, which means continuing the text onto the next visual line without moving on to the next line number in the message format. For example, let's get rid of our information addressees and add some routing information to the action addressee. Now we have included some more information for the addressee. By placing spaces at the start of the next visual line, it's clear that this is a continuation of the to line, the action addressee. If we do not put the spaces after the visual new line, then what we have is via, as if it's an element. And it's not. That's wrong. It's better to have a very long to line with no visual break than to put in a break that looks like the start of the next element. This is also why when we repeat an element, we include the pro sign that goes ahead of it. If we just put the next action addressee on a visual new line, it looks like a continuation if we have leading spaces. If we lack the leading spaces, it looks like an element pro sign, and of course it's not. Again, that's wrong. If we've got two action addressees, we list each one on a line that starts with the pro sign two. So where can we use this? This format is not well understood on amateur radio and it's not going to work on NTS or RRI circuits. You will, however, see this on government circuits instead of the amateur radiogram, which you just won't see on most government circuits. Shares and Mars will use this format for moving messages. Any kind of government station, you should expect to see this format. The Black Swan Net handles it. We can show some examples from Radio KD8TTE episode 56. We also show how we use this format to carry data where data networks have been knocked out of service for the Weather Alert Project. We show that in episode 48. This can be written into any NETS signal operating instructions or procedures. 
We encourage Auxcom stations to learn how to use the format and to practice it well. It will encourage and it will support interoperability with U.S. government stations. If you are making use of the format, please contact me. Let me know if you would like to liaise with the Black Swan Net for training purposes. You can follow our progress by subscribing to this channel. Share the video and like it if you found it to be helpful or interesting. We're here every week with a training video, typically on Monday afternoon or evening. We follow that up with a training task that is sent on the internet mailing list QTC, and we follow that with on-air activity Saturday, Sunday, and Monday on the Black Swan Net. We have ongoing projects such as the Weather Alert Project and the QSP Newsletter, which is also released every week. There is, of course, also the annual Black Swan Comics that takes place in the fall. However much or little experience you have, we invite you to train with us. Check the links below for references and information on the things that I've mentioned. Until then, this is KD8TTE.